Hey all, I'm Brad of Brave the Woods. The Procreate 5 update is finally here and I'm super excited to show off some of my favorite new features. Procreate has been killing it lately with his updates. They've been actually listening to the artist's needs and so I've been really impressed with the new updates that they've come out with and this update is no exception. They made everything from small UI improvements to expanding on tools that they already have and adding features that will just blow your mind. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what's new. Yes, there were a lot of changes in this Procreate 5 update, but I'm only gonna handpick just a few of my favorites. The ones I felt were actually the most impactful to me and uh, hopefully to you guys as well. So number one is the custom canvas settings. They changed that up just a little bit. If you go to your top right corner of your screen and tap on the plus button, uh, you'll be able to see that it looks pretty much the same. It's lighter now, the interface is, but, uh, and you have your defaults. But if you actually tap right here with that little I don't know what that is, a little duffel bag with a plus sign. You have a few more options than you used to have. And the most notable change here is, is having color profiles. Color profiles are gonna be one of those things that a lot of you artists are gonna be super excited about because now you have a lot more control over how your colors will match on different screens in case of RGB or in print with CMYK. You can also now change the settings, the quality settings on your time lapse. So if you wanted, it used to be just 1080p, but now you can go all the way up to 4K, which is fantastic if you're a YouTuber like myself and wanna share high quality time lapses of what you've created. And you can obviously go and change the studio quality, low quality, whatever you wanna do there as well. And then you have one last option, which is the canvas properties. Not super exciting, just one more step that you can take care of before you actually get into your project. There are a couple really helpful things that they did with the color panel. My favorite one is the fact that you can drag the color panel wherever you want onto your screen, which is a really sweet improvement because let's say if I want to uh, use my brush and paint on here, I still have my colors available here. And when, if I exit out of this, it'll go back. Let's just say I have that color, go to my brush and I start drawing. It'll get rid of the colors panel in the top right, which was kind of annoying because you kind of had to bounce back and forth between brush, panel, brush, panel. But now you can take that out and even just lay it right there if you'd like and be able to toggle through. And it's really nice if you have like a certain palette that you have for your illustration, you can just toggle through. And, and then you'd actually get to use your palette like a real painter's palette where you can hold on to and keep all your colors out and ready so you can just kind of pick them as you need. And then of course, if you wanted to redock it back to the right, you can just exit out of there and it disappears. The other cool thing now is that they've added this. So you have all these disc, classic, value, your palettes, they've always had those, but now they've added a fifth one, which is the harmony one, which is fantastic. So let's say I have this red color, it's telling me what the complementary color of that is, or I can go to analogous colors, so I can get ones closer to the same uh, hue, and then you can go and tetradic, like there's lots of different kinds you can do, but what's nice about that is that it kind of does some of the work for you, especially when you're trying to build your own palette. So let's say I want to use that now, and you can see how that pairs really well with that red in there uh, because it's complementary. Procreate now runs on a new powerful graphics engine called Valkyrie, which is great news for the graphics, but also for the performance of their brushes. Speaking of which, they did some amazing things with the brushes in this update. For example, now you can import and use Photoshop brushes. I haven't done an extensive test to see how well they transfer over. I know there's gonna, it's not gonna be apples to apples, I think there's gonna be some changes that need to be made, but from the small sample that I did, they actually look pretty good uh, transferring over to Procreate. They've also given you a ton of new brushes that just come default with Procreate. And uh, typically I don't care for the standard brushes because they don't give you a whole lot and a lot of them are kind of gimmicky. Uh, like for example, like when you get into like vintage and water, but this water one is actually pretty cool. They just have some other random things. I, I, don't, I wouldn't use these splotches and things like that, but They've added a somewhere, someone said 200, I think, new brushes, or there's 200 default brushes now in Procreate. I don't know how true that is. I know there's a lot, but the new brushes on here are really high quality. I've been very, very impressed. It's been fun kind of playing around with them. And it's nice if you're new to Procreate, especially, and don't have a lot of brushes that you've you know accumulated. I have thousands of brushes that I've downloaded or made and that we have here uh, in my library of brushes. So even then it gets kind of hard to tell which ones are which. So I'm trying to show you the ones I feel that, or the ones that aren't, you know, ones I paid for. These are actual ones that come with Procreate. But the quality has been really, really, really nice. And, I've, and they're really responsive. 
They behave really cool. Uh, some of them even do some funky stuff like, let's go to luminance, like these bokeh lights. Check that out, they change value, or not value, they change hue. So it's a color changing one, and it's actually part of their color dynamics that they've added to here. So let's go to their brush studio because that's what really made the biggest change. There's lots of cool brushes that they've added. You can play around and find those yourself. But if I tap on the brush itself, you'll notice that this whole interface is very different. You now have a drawing pad that you can see in real time, uh, what, what's going on, what changes you're making. For example, if I was gonna change the, let's do the stroke path, if I was gonna do a jitter, you can see it make that change right away. Uh, and it's just nice because you have a much larger surface uh, to draw on now and, and test out your brushes to make custom brushes or modify the ones that you have. Uh, but you also, there's, you know, you have your existing taper. I, I feel like these are new too. I don't remember these, being able to adjust your taper this way. I felt like it was just a slider scale that just told you what percentage. But now you actually have a taper line that you can manipulate, which I feel like is a little more intuitive. They've done a lot of little things like that. And I won't go too deep into this because that's not what this video is. But the color dynamics is a new thing that they've added and it allows you to have those different hues added in according to the pressure that you put on your pencil. And so you'll have a lot of these options right here to change the hue and uh, and be able to change the color pressure, which is really a neat function. I may be gimmicky, I don't know, maybe it'll work really cool in like a watercolor um, brush, but uh, I don't know. And, and you'll see at the bottom here, they've also added this about the brush, which is really nice because then you can see who made it, if you made it, and uh, that's, that's really helpful. <laughs> Probably the news I'm most excited for with this update is the animation assist. They've always had the ability to do looping animated GIFs before, and I've actually made a video showing you how to do it, and you can see that in the link below. But they've made it easier by adding a timeline and even onion skinning. So onion skinning is the ability to tweak how many frames you can see at one time and then control their opacity. So I'll show you what that means here. Let's first find out where Animation Assist is in our toolbar. So if you go to this little wrench icon, which is Actions, go over to Canvas, and you'll see right above Drawing Guide is Animation Assist. We'll turn that on and you'll see this little toolbar pop up from the bottom. And now this is a way for you to work within your frames with your, for your animation and not have to necessarily always go through your layers. Now you will still use your layers, but this is kind of a nice little quick snapshot of what's going on. So for example, let's just say I'm gonna draw a basketball. I'm gonna add a frame. The onion skinning is what you're seeing in the previous layers, the previous frames. So you'll notice that they are getting uh, less opaque. They're, they're starting to, to be a little bit more transparent in the background. That's so you can see the progress or the path of what you're making which is really nice. And if you go into settings, you can actually change that up too by showing only a certain amount. So after a certain amount of time, uh, it'll only show up to four onion skin frames. So let's say I'm gonna add another frame. It's gonna disappear. Oh, whoops, actually I need to go back to that one. There we go, let's go back to this one. You'll notice that it doesn't keep the entire trail, it just keeps the, the top four, the, the most recent four. And then if we press play, you'll notice that it quickly goes through there, but you can also mess with the settings on here and you can have a ping pong. So it goes back and forth. You can have it be just a single shot so you can see all the pieces together. Um, and then you can have how many frames per second you'd like it to be. So you can have it go a little faster, slower, but without going into too much detail, that's the nice part about onion skinning is that like if you had a character, you wanna move his arms and his eyes, you can kind of, you can see the history of what your uh, animation is has done whatever your subject has done and then you can kind of follow it along it makes the process of animating so much easier and you'll want to just play around with this and um, there's lots more things I'll do a whole nother video on just animating in here but uh, for now play around with it you'll really enjoy it all right so this may seem like a small thing for some of you but for all you Photoshop users out there this clone tool is a sight for sore eyes I've missed it terribly. So the clone tool basically lets you pick an area you want to clone and then you can mimic it when you draw somewhere else on the canvas. So for example, on the hat here, I have a lot of details and stuff like that. It's not just the color, it's everything, all the information right there in a certain area. So let's go to our little magical wand or the adjustments panel and uh, click on clone and just move it to where you want it to move it. So let's say I want to pick up some of this area in the hat. And then I'm going to go over here and just start drawing on another area and you'll see that it's starting to pick up 
where I was, uh, where I have this little circle placed. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the clone tool, but it's really nice to be able to use it here. I've been kind of missing it, especially when there's more complex areas in an illustration, I can go ahead and just clone it and be able to, especially if it's like grass or something like that. Some of the like detail stuff, you can have it clone and that's really, really handy. But you can mess with the brush size and you can also mess with the strength of the cloning. And um, it's just a really, really awesome tool that I loved in Photoshop and now it's here in Procreate. Okay, so I know I was trying to go for only five new updates from this new Procreate 5 update. I felt like 5.5 five, is a great theme going on. Uh, but then I realized there's one more tool that I wanted to share with you. So this is considered your bonus tool. Number six, save and load selections. So using the selection tool right here with the little S icon, uh, let's just do a quick like, little freehand. Typically you can go and you can move things. Uh, but when you're done, if I want to go to like the brush, for example, I can't really interact with that anymore. Maybe I want to do multiple things within that same selected area. You have to just kind of keep copying and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So what you can do here now is if I make the selection, a new tool or a new little uh, icon appears and it says save and load. So now I can click on that, tap the little plus sign, and now it's a saved selection. So I can come back to this whenever I'd like. So right now, let's just say I want to draw in here my save selection, but then I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna go go to a different layer, and I'm not gonna have that same selection there, but what I can do is if I go back to selection, it says save and load, I can pick the original selection that I had on a different layer, oh whoops, I'm back on my arrow there, and I can start doing it all over again. So now you have a little bank of selected areas and you can go back to, which is a really neat little feature, and if you want to get rid of it, you can add as many as you want, but if you want to get rid of it, you can just hit delete and it's gone. But I thought that was a really neat feature that you needed, needed to hear, so I added in there as my sixth bonus new feature that I enjoyed. Okay, well thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully all you excited Procreate users out there are having fun with this new update. I know I am. What's your favorite update? Is there one that I missed that you absolutely love? Please share in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos just like this one. So get out there, brave those creative woods, and we'll see you next time.